You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. Welcome to A Kind and Gentle Word. I'm Jordan. When I say the word prayer, what images or words come to mind? You might picture someone kneeling beside their bed with their hands folded, or maybe a leader of the church speaking in big words with their face lifted to the ceiling. You might also picture a circle around a dinner table with everyone holding hands, some more comfortable speaking to an unseen higher power than others. Even when we think of what a prayer sounds like, It can seem very stale or as if there's only one way to do it. Dear God, all the stuff in the middle, in Jesus' name, amen. That stuff in the middle, that's the hard part. At least it was for me. I was always intimidated by praying out loud, even inside my own mind. But here's the thing. God already knows my thoughts. But when I address him personally, I feel like I'm tapping him on his shoulder for a quick moment of attention. I know logically that I'm not bothering God or taking up his time, but he just seems to have a lot going on. (laughs) The tiny problem of me getting to work on time or not being able to fall asleep seems so silly to bug him about. However, that's what he wants. God wants us to go to him with big, small, and everything else in between. And maybe you are going one step further and wondering if he's even listening at all. He is. He's infinitely aware of you and is constantly waiting like a child playing hide and seek, dying to burst out of their perfect hiding place. Okay, actually that analogy doesn't really work because God isn't hiding from us. He's in plain sight. Honestly, most of the time we are hiding from him or ignoring him outright. The first example in the Bible of God's relationship with us is in Genesis, the first book of the Bible with the first people on the planet, Adam and Eve. Now for context, We're about to talk about what happens directly after Adam and Eve have eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 3, 8, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. The Lord called to the man and said to him, where are you? All right, there is a lot to unpack in this section of the Bible. First is, I just want to point out how incredible it is that God was walking in the garden and that he was hoping to walk side by side with Adam and Eve. We don't feel like we get to do that anymore, but we do. It's just that we don't get to physically walk beside him, but spiritually God is with us always. He's all around us. And if you've accepted Lord Jesus into your heart, he's always inside you, walking with you step by step. Okay. I got to move on from the coolness of that especially just the idea that God was just walking around enjoying his creation, but I'm going to stop nerding out for a second and let's unpack what's going on here. God definitely knew exactly where they were, but he chose to call out to them and they had to choose to answer his call. God always knows where we are and what we're thinking, but he wants an intimate relationship with us where we choose him daily, moment by moment. About two years ago, I tried something new with my prayers. Instead of the formal, dear God, I instead started to say a gentle, hey, in my mind and dive right into whatever I was thinking about. I don't have to alert him, but it helps me to start talking to him as if we are friends because hi, we are. That's right. God is our friend. And no, I'm not talking about that really annoying song. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend because... I can't. I'm sorry. If you enjoy that song, please continue to belt it out. I just, I have a hard time with it because it sounds like we are singing about God rather than to God. It doesn't feel like a worship song to me. It just feels like some kind of weird brag, which you know what? We should brag about the fact that we are friends with God. So you do you. Here's the thing. I have a really great dad. So I was given a really wonderful example of an earthly father to imagine what it might be like to talk to my heavenly father and what a relationship with him would be like. Conversations with my earthly father, my dad, are super easy. So I tried to apply that same thought process when approaching the Lord with my thoughts, questions, or just when I ask him for something. I started with simple sentences, and it's kind of hard to not always end the prayer with amen. And instead, I just started saying, okay, thanks. 
<laughs> and I kept going with my thoughts. Because when I think about it, every time I talk to my dad, I don't end the conversation by saying, okay, bye. And then we continue to sit next to each other. <laughs> and honestly, let's talk about it like this. I think this is what it means when we say praying unceasingly. It's not that we're always praying, like we are constantly talking directly to God. It's more like we're in open communication with him at all times. And we realize that he is always ready, willing, and eager to have a conversation with us and that it doesn't have to start and end. It can just keep going. After a time of starting with a little, hey, and simple sentences, these sentences soon became small paragraphs and then full on conversations that ebb and flow throughout the day. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. <laughs> Someone I greatly admire and respect voiced those words recently, and they honestly applied so much more than what they were originally talking about. <laughs> so I encourage you today to just reach out in your mind or out loud, if that makes you comfortable as well, to just say, hey, and can I just say, he knows you're talking to him. He can feel it. He's listening. He's waiting. And when he hears that little word from you, the adrenaline is pumping for him, just like it is for you. He is excited to hear your voice and he's eager to start a conversation with you and never have it finish. Thank you so much for listening today. If you enjoyed today's episode, I invite you to share it with someone who might need a kind and gentle word. Our next episode will be an interview with my sister, Jacqueline Hotman, about what it means to have inner and outer strength. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to drop a prayer request in the comments. You can also request topics, scriptures, or questions you have for a future episode. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to drop a prayer request in the comments. You can also request topics, scriptures, or questions you have for a future episode. You can also send all of those things to our email address, life in italics at gmail.com. That's italics with an X. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please subscribe and follow wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode. Remember to be kind to others and gentle with yourself for we are all works in progress. I hope you have a wonderful day.